Hi, and welcome to cubichead.com. This is Mazir Sharifian, and to be honest, I didn't have an excuse not to make any tutorials due to these crazy times with this pandemic. So I'm back with a Nuke Crash Course tutorial. Uh, first of all, I really wanted to thank you so much for your support, your comments, and your subscriptions. I promise I'll do my best to have more frequent tutorials. As title suggests, this is a crash course in Nuke, so it's going to be so long that I've actually decided to separate it into three parts. Part one, which is the one you're watching right now, is the orientation. And basically, I will show you how to import files and how to navigate inside Nuke. Part two is going to be the general tools, and by the end of that video, you can almost do anything inside Nuke. And in part three, which is the advanced tools, you get introduced to common advanced tools like rotoing, keying, tracking, and match move. So without further ado, let's just dive in. As you've already seen in my uh, old tutorial, uh, the migrating from After Effects to Nuke, which had a terrible sound, uh, this is uh, the Nukes environment, and uh, I'm going to do a quick overview of different panels in case you haven't watched that. Uh, basically, we have our uh, viewer, viewport, or monitor up here, and we have our timeline here, and you can just scope through, or you can just use the hotkeys like JKL to just uh, uh, play uh, your sequence. You have your node graph here, which everything is kind of happening here. If you wanted to know uh, how you want to compare the node graph, with the uh, After Effects, it's basically uh, a combination of the uh, project panel and the composition panel. Let me just create something here so you can see. So this is like your comp and this is your project panel, right? This is both. So everything, if you want to import something, it happens here. If you want to comp something, it happens here. And obviously the timeline is up here if you want to just scrub through. Uh, that's kind of one of the reasons it makes this uh, whole UI a little bit more like minimal and um, it's everything's everything's to the point and everything's in its right place. Uh, the next panel, uh, the major panel is the uh, the properties panel, which uh, you whatever node you select, it's going to show up its parameters if you want to change them. It's exactly like the effects control here. If I just select something and press F3, uh, it just shows my effects control and you see it's kind of uh, like in After Effects uh, It's like just if I just say if I change my workspace and or maybe I just say like all panels uh, Where is it? It's up here almost Like all panels it's like we, we have like so many panels like switching between panels or maybe customizing panels But um, here it's like just we don't have that much. It's like mostly we have these panels Yeah, of course we have like curve editor and dope sheet but um, or even script editor, we don't we don't need background renders for now. Uh, but in a general, it's like just uh, you don't need to switch panels. And for instance, if you're using trackers or if you're using text, you you see all its uh, gizmos uh, here in the viewport. And uh, so this is basically uh, like mostly you're concentrating here in the uh, in the viewport. And even if you want to just switch to three D and two D, it's just it's just tab. You can just switch between these two environments. So basically, this is really simple, and everything's like straightforward. The last thing is the uh, your tools. It's basically your effects, and everything you can create. It's here. I mean, it's like just uh, like if, if even if you add like some plugins, these are like my own tools. Uh, so you can just have them here. So this is this is as you can see, this is pretty straightforward. It's like just everything's uh, in its right place. And it's, it's kind of makes it easier for you to navigate. Now, let's just start with a simple project by importing some files. And after that, I'm going to jump into another project that has all the topics. So I won't forget anything. Uh, I'm going to just uh, continue working on that project. So when you uh, start Nuke, the first thing you need to do for sure is like just to save your project, right? Because it's basically untitled. And it says modified or there's like an um, astral sign. Um, it, it's gonna. It's, it means that you have changed something, and you need to save it. Because if I just wanted to quit, it's, it says like, "Oh my God, it's it's you haven't saved anything." So make sure you save your project. And the other thing is that maybe uh, it's by default it's on, but make sure you have um, uh, your autosave set into like whatever. Uh, it's by default it's like five seconds. Um, 
if you're idle and um, 30 seconds uh, force it so if it, it's like these are like the default values but make sure you have that in case if uh, new crashes it's the autosave system is great i mean you can just easily just open up your like, latest like autosave because it's really simple i mean if you look at the new scripts it's they're like you can just even open them and just edit them uh, inside like a text editor this is that that simple but at the same time like really you can just do heavy stuff so uh, so this is uh the first thing is that we save it so i'm not going to do that because i'm going to jump into another project but the other thing that uh you can do is that by default this uh part that, that you see all the properties of your different nodes uh eventually it, you get overwhelmed i mean for instance if i have like multiple um uh, nodes uh, creating or selecting it's gonna you'll see all their parameters so you don't know I mean you need to double click on something to just come up in the uh, you see how I'm double clicking on this double clicking on this it gets the first one in the row so I mean I, I usually just set it into one so it shows one active uh, uh, like uh, properties of the node one, one node at a time and there are like different ways as well I mean some people are like used to just floating uh, uh, like panels and it, it's up to you but this is how i do it and the other thing is that just make sure if you don't see this environment i mean make sure you go into like maybe shift f1 or maybe reset your environment or make your own own one i mean i have like two uh monitors and you can just have like two screens uh but uh just this is something if I, I would suggest you do or you can just skip it the next thing is that as soon as you start nuke uh, it gives you one node which is called the viewer so basically the viewer is your viewport as you can see i have it up here and to create multiple viewers you can just press ctrl i right but to be honest we don't usually use multiple viewers it's like just 90 percent of the time we use one viewer but uh maybe sometimes you want to just uh, have like a uh, one viewer on 3d one on 2d or two different um uh you, you, you're just basically like just comparing some stuff uh, you might use two but 90 percent of the time we just use one viewer but uh, what is viewer in general? I would just say in After Effects terms, it's basically your first comp. So if I go here, and so as soon as you, uh, for instance, if I just import something here, I already imported something. So, so and I'm de I delete this. Uh, so this is like uh, basically your first comp, right? But inside that comp, you can have multiple comps, right? and you can just uh, go like crazy right i mean you can just pre-comp and pre-comp and pre-comp and they're like living within uh, like uh, each other right but here the viewer as you can see it's like a dead end uh, so in general the uh, the workflow in nuke is from top to bottom it, there there, are, there is no rule you can just go left to right but i mean it's good to use it top to bottom as you can see from the inputs of different nodes uh, I mean, some applications like Flame is left to right or Fusion is left. Actually, Fusion um, offers both directions. By default, it's left to right, but you can just go. Uh, the uh, the inputs, they, they, they change uh, positions. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's good to just uh, uh, stick with this uh, type of top to bottom. But as you can see, I have like an input for this node, but I don't have an output, which, which this is like a dead end, right? Because this is this that's why I'm just saying this is your first comp because you can just put it in another thing you put it you can put a viewer in, in another viewer if you're if you wanted to just follow the the After Effects terms it's basically your first uh, comp because here as well I mean even if you don't do any pre comps to see something like I can double click on this and see the footage right but if you want to work on it and you you wanted to do something with it you need to just put it in a comp so you can see it here and this is this is uh, how it works here so we don't have like pre-comp like crazy pre-comps here uh, like in a uh, in nuke uh, of course i mean there are like occasions we might do that if uh, the scripts is like it's super heavy and like multiple compers are working on it yeah we, we we might use but uh if you're just working on a single script by yourself usually it's just uh if you wanted to just make a tool for instance i have a tool here uh, frequency separation and this is actually a group uh, the, if I just copy it into a group uh, and I can just easily go inside that group and you can see it's, a, it's just a it's basically a tool so usually if uh, we wanted to make like pre-comps or groups here it's just um, uh, it's usually it's for to make tools uh, and we don't do like pre-comp and pre-comp and pre-comp we want to see everything at, at a glance I mean your whole project 
And that's the thing that's great about Nuke if you want to compare it with After Effects. And if you wanted to know more about like how to make like this uh, specific tool that I made, I mean, you can just check this tutorial. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you can just do it after this crash course so you know about the uh, environment. And uh, that's one of the things uh, that's great about Nuke. One other thing is like the 3D space, but this is like the node graph is like just, it's it's amazing. And um, if, if there is still a debate whether Nuke is better than After Effects, for finishing visual effect shots, just hear it from someone who worked as a motion designer for 10 years and almost five years as a compositor. Believe me, when you comp a visual effect shot with a node based environment, there's no turning back. There is no turning back. Now I'm gonna just delete this and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just import some files and see how it works here. Uh, to do that, you can just go to the effects panel or node panel and just the first node is like read node. And you, as you can see, the, the icon is like just importing files. If you want to just import something, as you can see, this is read. And obviously, the uh, if you want to just write something, this is the way. So I'm going to just press R or I can just hit this button. And I'm going to just uh, import something. Uh, let's just see. Let's just for now, just import this. So this is this is a read node. This is the first node after the uh, viewer that you're going to encounter in Nuke. And uh, whatever node you're creating or selecting is going to show up its parameters up here. Uh, so I, I, you can just import like this. Or if you have like multiple files in multiple locations, because you can just drag a couple of files in single um, in one location and make sure you have like sequence uh, check um, is, uh, is checked sequences. And uh, if I have like, uh, like files other places as well, I can just say next instead of open. I can just go up, go to the background plate and just now say hit open. So it's gonna just put them up both inside my uh, node graph. Uh, so now how, how can I just uh, sh look at these files, right? Uh, I'm gonna just do like uh, uh, the way that I'm gonna just go with the After Effects terms. Uh, so as you can see, if I just create a comp uh, and I have like I import a file like here I, I have a comp and I imported two files they're not still connected so I can't see this unless I just put it inside the comp right Th this is the same way here so we need to just put it in the viewer so we can just see it up here and to do that either you can just use the input uh, the, the the input number here and as uh, if you add something to this it's going to uh, increment like a new number like it just now i can just add two i can just add three up to nine and zero so it's going to be 10 inputs and the easier way is that you select your read uh, you select your node basically it doesn't have to be read er, any node in the graph and just hit uh, a number one and as you can see, as soon as I hit one, it dis it deselects uh, the the the, uh, the node because uh, these hotkeys like one two, through nine and zero, it's actually it depends on what you're uh, you're selecting. It do it does a different action. So if if you're selecting something, it's going to put that into the viewer like input like for instance two. But if you're not selecting anything and as you press that number, it's going to show that number. So this is this is how you can just maybe compare or just look at stuff. And for instance, I can just hit this and just hit two. It's not going to show two. It's going to just put this into input two. So make sure that uh, you're not selecting anything if you want to look at something. So for instance, I put this into one, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is uh, this is how you can just uh, look. Um, uh, look at your uh, like nodes, uh, your read nodes or whatever nodes selecting. And uh, the way if you wanted to just uh, uh, navigate inside like a node graph or inside the, the, the viewport is pretty easy and straightforward. I mean, both of them have, have the same hotkeys. Uh, here it's like just middle mouse click, just hold your middle mouse and just uh, move around. Uh, or make sure you're, um, if you're using a pen, one of the... Uh, one of the keys are, are like uh, set into middle mouse and then here again pan, pan and tilt and if you hit uh, like uh, keep the middle mouse button clicked and uh, uh, and now click and drag on this um, um, what is it uh, on your uh, like a Wacom or like your mouse you click and just drag it's gonna just zoom in and zoom out this is 
this is great. I, I wish other applications had the same uh, hotkeys, hotkeys combination because it's really smooth if you want to just uh, uh, zoom in and zoom out. And uh, to be honest, it's kind of a uh, uh, it's better than the wheel up and wheel down or like other um, hotkeys. It's really smooth. It's not steppy. And something else, if you are lost in your node graph or like just you're zoomed in, if you press um, F, uh, it's going to just fit uh, your uh, node graph. And as you can see, you have like your uh, like a view. If you're just really far away, it shows your whole nodes uh, here when it gets really complicated. And here you can press F or H. F it's going to just fit it like this, but H is going to uh, fit it like with height. So F and H, it's going to be easier for you to remember. And now uh, the other thing, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that is when you import like multiple files or single files, whatever, make sure you set your project settings uh, like uh, to correct uh, frame range and resolution because later on when we are working, for instance, with Rotos, it needs to be set your root format for, th for that because these are like set into like a specific range and specific um, uh, format, right? Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of like color space as well, but for now this is fine. But if you have like a roto or something else, you create something from scratch, how this is this is going to be getting its format, right? So as you can see, this is going to get it a weird format. It's not a weird format, but it's like it's set it uh, as default. You can change this if you want, but uh, I mean the default uh, set uh, the format, the default one, but to uh, change it in this specific uh, script, how you can do that is like press S for settings. Make sure you're hovering over the node graph and press S because if you're hovering over the viewport, it's going to show up your viewer settings. So I'm hovering over here. Uh, and later on, you'll see that, for instance, R is read here, but R here shows the red channel. So if I press S here, it's going to show me the root uh, settings. And make sure that you're just set it correctly into your range that you want to work on because you you might get like different ranges from different files and so, so some of them might start at like frame one some of them are like for instance this is the setup that I have usually starting from thousand one but uh, yeah make sure you set it up and lock it because if I import something else and it's not locked it's going to just add it to this range if that range is from one to ten it's going to just make your uh, if it's not locked it's going to just make your script like from one to like hundred one and I'm going to just put this into 1920-1080. So these are the steps you need to do. Make sure you do it like uh, before you start like um, comping or doing anything. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to just uh, uh, jump onto the uh, script that I made. Um, and uh, I'm going to just uh, uh, start like doing uh, all the topics. And this is obviously a crash course, so I'm going to be super quick. So forgive me if I'm talking a little bit fast. I close this and I'll jump into this script that I made. So basically I just used uh, the read nodes like press R and just imported different sections and added some backdrops and just so you can see what's going on. So if I zoom in here, so I basically have this uh, tutorial based on two parts, uh, like two major parts. One is like general tools and one is like uh, advanced tools. The general tools, if we, we zoom in, we have like different sections. First, I'm going to just start like talking about merge and different operations they have. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the uh, the gray tools and I mean all the uh, color corrections tools and uh, uh, and the concept of premult because uh, some people are still uh, struggling like understanding this concept. Then I'm going to talk about uh, filters and time uh, like the, these two sections here. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go through all the the the, the notes. This is like a crash course and. Uh, uh, I, I'll just introduce you a couple of nodes that we usually use and you can just go feel free to just go to ch check all the nodes. Then I'm going to talk about like transform. Yes, even moving something. It's like a node here. It's not like After Effects. And uh, I'm going to talk about like uh, the transform nodes. Uh, so at this point, you can just move stuff and uh, the, the concept of concatenate. And then I'm going to talk about how to keyframe, like whatever you have here, if, especially transform, how you can just keyframe them. And uh, if you're lazy you can just use expressions or even uh, if you're really a pro you can just go and just use python and just uh, do stuff like crazy stuff and uh, again all these topics like, we can really go deep and just especially with the expressions and uh, the t uh, the tickle expression and um, the python 
Then we're going to jump into the advanced tools. So here I'm going to talk about uh, Roto and um, basically we have like planar tracking as well, like embedded in the Rotos but, and, and keying. If you're not used to these terms, it's basically how to separate foreground from background. Either you use Rotos or you use keying, like uh, chroma key or uh, luma key, like chroma key is like color key or luma is like basically luminance. Then I'm going to talk about 2D tracking. Um, and this is pretty straightforward and then 3d tracking or camera tracking or match move whatever you want to call it and at this point you get introduced to the 3d space and how you can just import geos and how you can just manipulate geos even edit them here that's crazy I mean and you don't need a plugin like elements 3d in After Effects and you can even just edit them that's 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 phenomena that's that's amazing and then in the end I want to just show you if you get your renders from the, the 3D departments, how we can just manage different passes and just work on them. And uh, this is basically, these two are related to 3D.